All right, hello. In this video, we are going to get some really basic transformations into our program. We currently have a quad and a triangle. We're going to make some matrices. We're going to keep that quad where it is, and we're going to modify the triangle a little bit. Keep it nice and light. Okay. Now, as far as I could tell, Metal doesn't really have math libraries. I mean, yes, we could use GLM, um, but we would need to make a few modifications. One of those being the fact that Metal is based around, the Metal graphic system is based around the left-hand rule, not the right-hand rule for cross products. But anyway, for whatever reason, I'm just going to go ahead and make my own math library. It won't be too heavy. So we've heard of GLM. I'm going to make Metal M, Metal Maths. Okay, so to test that this is working, I'm going to keep it really simple and just create an identity matrix. Okay, so I'll just head over to my source file and have a look at that definition. Matrices in um, OpenGL and I, I guess Vulkan, and I'm pretty sure DirectX. Anyway, the, the main point I'm getting at, the most common memory layout for matrices is column major order. And what that means is if you have your matrix as a set of 16 floats, because it's a four by four matrix, and you count along from element one, element two, element three, you'll be going down the rows of the first column or the zeroth column. And then as you pop along, you pop over to the next column, go down there, go down there. So the point I'm getting at is when I'm constructing these matrices, I construct them column by column. It's all about the columns. So let me just go ahead. And now, as you can see here, I'm using the SIMD matrix constructor. What that will take in is a set of columns, basically, which I've defined above. So at this point, I have a function which can construct an identity matrix for me. I'm going to modify the shader to take in some sort of transformation matrix and apply it to the vertices. So I'll just go over to my shader and I'll go to the vertex stage. Currently, I'm taking in my um, vertex. I'm also going to take in a matrix. So what I'm doing here, this is very similar to uniforms in OpenGL, but it's actually a little more intuitive than that. It's simply an input to the function. So anything which is bound set to buffer one will be interpreted as this constant matrix. Things are gonna get a little funky here, and the reason I'm gonna do that is to deal with half precision floats. So this is a little strange, a little bit of overkill, I admit, but here's how it works. At the interface between the shader and the program, the CPU and the GPU, data is really passed in float form. The CPU, as far as I can tell, doesn't have a good representation for half precision floating points. That's fine. So we pass in a full float. But then in intermediate stages within the shader, we convert things to half precision. And that speeds up this math. And it seems a little silly right now, but with larger mathematical calculations, it speeds it up by a factor of a half, or, you know, doubles the speed, basically. But then, of course, in the end, we need to convert that back to single precision, so we can write it to the screen. But there we have it. We've now taken in that transformation matrix and applied it to the vertices. So I'll go ahead and in my renderer, right down in the draw function, 
I will write before I do anything. By the way, I only need to bind this pipeline once. Right before I do anything, I will upload a um, matrix. For which, of course, we will need to include our math library. Okay, so we've got that transformation. We'll now need to send that to the GPU, and we do that with the set vertex bytes. So this isn't set vertex buffer, this is set vertex bytes. So we just need a raw pointer, which we can get with the address operator, and then we need the length of the thing, which should be. And then the index we're sending it to, we're sending it to buffer index one. So we can run this and verify that everything's working as it was before. Now, just to confirm that this is really important, we can remove that upload operation and we get an error because it's saying, hey, we need a buffer binding at index one none has been sent. This is sort of similar to an OpenGL when you have a uniform and you don't send a uniform in. It takes in zeros as its default. In this case, Metal throws an error as its default. Okay, so, so far so good. Now I'm going to throw in, throw in a number of other transformations, starting with translation. So I've sort of been through the um, mathematical underpinnings of these matrices a number of times. Probably the best explanation I have for this currently is if you go to my OpenGL with C++ video series, and then I've got a video there on transformations. That is the most comprehensive and best explained video I have on the topic. So I'm actually not gonna tread that ground here. Go look at that video, but anyway. Now, everything here will be identity apart from the last column. The last column specifies the um, modification. I was editing last time, and I heard that those sirens in the background. Not really a lot I can do about that. Anyway. Okay, so the way we can read this, I will go through this a little bit, is if we look down, down the um, these three, these four lines, those are the coefficients for the linear combination for the new x coordinate. So we have the new x coordinate is one times the old x coordinate plus no z, uh, no y, no z plus this d pos times one. So this is simply adding a constant value onto the current x-coordinate. We have the new y-coordinate is no x-contribution, 1 times the old y-coordinate, no y-contribution, plus this translation amount times 1. So that's going to work. Now I'm just go over to my renderer and copy this line here, these two lines, because I want to upload a different transformation for the triangle. So yeah, we just apply some translation to the right and up to the triangle. We can run this. Ah build failed. There we go, perfect. So we have the triangle, but it's just been shifted up and to the right. Okay, so 
We'll now have a look at rotation. Specifically rotation around the z-axis. What I'll just do is I'll need to also import the math library. Basics first, I'm going to need to convert theta from radians to degrees. Then I'm going to need the sine and cosine of that angle. Here the f on the end denotes that I'm using fast approximation functions. There we have it, provided that I am remembering my rotation matrices correctly, which I think I am. But anyway, that information is widely available. So double check it. Let me know if I'm wrong. That should be the rotation matrix around the z-axis by the given amount. And what have I got here? Ah, uh, z-rotation. Okay, great. So I'll go to my renderer and I'll just give it a parameter. It is good, I think, for renderers to have a time parameter in case you have any time-based effects like warping or, or things. But anyway, then I'll go to my render function and right when I draw before I do anything, I'll just update that time. Okay. So, <clears throat> sorry, I'm still getting over this, this flu, I don't know, annoying. But anyway, so here I've got uh, this translation and I want to throw in a rotation. What I want to do is I want to perform the rotation first and then apply the translation. Now with matrices, the order is when you stack on an effect, it multiplies onto the left. And so I'm going to adhere to that in this case. So again, we read this from right to left. First we apply a rotation, and then we apply a translation. Give that a go. And we see, in fact, that our triangle is spinning around. We can confirm that this is correct by doing things the wrong way. And now, as you can see, because we've sent it out to the corner before applying a rotation, this is actually spinning it around some point. So this isn't great. Okay, the last effect I'm going to apply is a scale. And this is pretty straightforward. This is basically the identity function, except we're multiplying each of the, the coordinates. We'll be saying, um, usually this would be 1 times x, plus nothing, nothing, nothing is a new x value. Instead, we'll take factor times x. So the x-coordinate just gets multiplied by some number, 2, a half, it doesn't matter. x, y, z, just like that. And w is untouched. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply that. If we go back to the renderer, <clears throat> if I think about my order here, what I want to do first of all is scale everything. I'm going to make it really small, make it a tenth of the size. So I scale it down first, then I rotate it, and then I send it out. Hmm. Okay, give that a go. And that's pretty much what we expect to see. It's small, it's spinning, it's up there. 
Okay, so that is it for today. In the next video, I'm going to have a look at some slightly more complicated transformations, basically perspective and proper 3D stuff. But yeah, hope you had fun, and I will see you again later. Bye.